I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord. And welcome to our 3 ABN Today cooking program. We are the, the Mitchum Sisters. Sisters. I'm Linda. I'm Brenda. And I'm Cinda. <laughs> <laughs> and we have an exciting, exciting program. program. Yes, we today. do. We are calling this Happy, Happy Holidays, Holidays from, from our 3 ABN kitchen, kitchen to yours. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this time of year, don't you? I do. It's not just it's not just all the beautiful colors and and the the snow and the fireplaces and all the aromas that you think about this time of year. It's the it's spirit, the, spirit the people, of, of, and they Christmas. get into this yes. giving spirit, they're happier. Because we, because we are highlighting Jesus Christ as our Savior to the world. Yes, That's because right. Jesus mm -hmm. is the, the reason, reason for, for the season. season. And I love that. When you make Jesus first in your life, I love that you, you just can't help but want to share him all year long. But I love that we have a special time where we really think about his birth. And we can reflect we really, on we, his birth. We, we really right. think about what God has done for us. We think about Jesus' birth and what God's amazing gift that he would send his only son to this earth to die for us so that we might have eternal life That's for him. Right. And we cannot concentrate on that too much. We cannot stop thinking about that too much. We should really think about what Jesus did, his special uh, you know, gift on Calvary that he did for us. And, and you know, we, we talk about sharing Jesus um, all year long, but you know, we can really take the opportunity to share Jesus, especially at the holidays. And something, right. something that um, I do in, in um, every holiday is I always invite, a, I mean, anybody who needs a little cheering up, who has had a hard year, mm -hmm. or right. who's going to be lonely for the holidays, mm -hmm. I invite them to my holiday table. That's and right. um, we're encouraging you to do the same. And in fact, and Cinda always makes her home so inviting. She always has a very special holiday theme. And I think our, our longtime viewers have come to know that when we're doing a holiday program, you're going to get to see one of Cinda's table decorations. And today uh, is is no, uh, right. is no you're not going to miss out. Today That's you're right. going to get that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, to give you ideas how to decorate your buffet table and then just, you know, put the food out and invite people that you would normally not even invite to your home. Maybe right. somebody that you have seen that maybe that you notice they don't really have anybody sitting with them at church or maybe right. a neighbor that you never see anyone coming and going from their house. And, you know, there's, there's, invite people. There's so many wonderful opportunities to have those divine appointments where we can really just love people to Jesus. Or those single people in your church who don't That's have right. families and they're all by themselves and where the holidays aren't very happy for them. There's no you better. You can help them to be happy. That's right. And there's no better way than friendship evangelism to touch hearts for Jesus. And when you invite someone into your home, you're sharing Jesus. That's right. There's another part of it that is it, is so special and that is is that in this day and age families are just being split apart and um, this is a time when we can even make our family feel very very special that's, that's to right. celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for families that's and right. I think you know just making something special for them says I love you 
and doing and little you're special, special and right. you're special. So you're right, sis. This uh -huh. is this is a wonderful time of the year to also make our families feel right. like they are very important and special because and when we do that they will start to glimpse how much Jesus Christ really loves them because unless we show God's love how can anybody how can really they, know, they understand what it is know love it. and yes, I love how right. we learned even as a child and we talk about our mom and dad a lot and mm -hmm. uh, and because we just really love them and they were such really godly parents and um, examples and to examples us. to us mm -hmm. I loved how mom would always have a special night usually Friday nights where it was a, um, a all the best dishes that she had special mm -hmm. goblets those blue goblets that I she have had. there's only one left and I have it I have it in a box it's like, and it, it's just it brings back such warm memories yeah. because she didn't just save the best for the guests that's she right. wanted her family to feel like right. we were loved that's and special right. yeah. and so that's really where, where we got it it was our training from our mom and dad and also what I love that mom and dad um, every holiday we didn't have money for gifts. In fact, um, some years we didn't get gifts. That's and, right. um, we made homemade and things. We made homemade right. things. And sometimes <laughs> maybe it was only one gift a person. But you know, so mom and dad always focused on what we could do mm -hmm. to other for other people. So that way, the focus was not on us, and even we though we get. were little children, and even though we, I mean, as we grew up through the years, it wasn't on what we were getting. It was what are we going to do for someone, and what who are you? Give? Who are you going to do something for this season? That's and right. we did and it as a family. That mom, it was we did a, it family. As a family. That's right. When yeah. you're thinking about others, that's really the best blessing, anyway. There's there's right. no better, there's really a, a no better uh, joy than to serve Jesus. And when we are helping others, we're serving Jesus. You know, and we're thinking of That's others. That's right. So, um, and it says in John 13, um, it tells us that we're to love one another. And it says, by this, we will all will know that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. So how we show love to one another says who we belong to. That's you know, right. I, I love that thought too. Yes, and I And that's too. one of my favorite verses. I love the fact that mom and dad, in um, they involved and included all five of us children. Yep, into, there's five of us. We have two brothers. Into making the <laughs> holiday special for um, our family and for those around us. The people that we knew, people that we didn't even know. Okay. And they didn't spend but, a lot of money. No. We we actually remember how we would go out and pick the little holly berries and, and we would string cones. them with popcorn and, <laughs> and we'd find this little bush and dad would bring it in and we'd, we'd put our popcorn strings and our and little it, berries around it. And it wasn't always yeah. the most, you know, uh, fun loving people at church that they invited into our home either. Yeah. I can remember, I don't know if you, you guys remember this, but there was this one particular um, lady in our church that didn't ever, ha she wore the same thing to church every single day. She didn't smell very good because I, you know, she didn't sound, smell like she bathed very much at all. And she just was always, boy, by herself, mom and dad just welcomed her in, into our house and brought her to the home. And you know what, none of us, you know, we, we, it, it, made it even seem like she smelled bad. We just showed her love. Do you know yes. that woman changed? Mom helped her find clothes. That's Mom right. slowly, she was able to, you know, Throughout learn about, the years, about she cleanliness just through the her. years. And it made a huge difference, didn't That's it? That's right. And so, you know, you as parents, um, keep in mind that you are the example for your children. You can tell your children all kinds That's of right. things, but you, you need are to the show example. them. And, and, it, yeah, and if you don't have children, say you're single or whatever, and you're, um, you, you still can be a mother in Israel or a father in Israel that, right. that shares with the church kids and those around you. Well, that lady I was speaking about, till the day she died, thought of us as family. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, God really does want us to reach out and help help others and think about others. And it's about the giving. And we learn to really love her and see the beauty in her heart. That's because right. a lot of times we <laughs> exactly. go by the outside and we exactly. think, oh, but when we look at through God's eyes into the heart, we see the beauty. Exactly. That's so what I was going to say. Uh -huh. When when she actually um, came to our home and we actually spent time with her, she was we, awesome. she, we, she we was were like, precious. wow, she's really nice. We like her. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, we've got some recipes for you today that um, will inspire you to have your own buffet and invite all your friends and uh, neighbors and, and people that you don't even know that well, invite them in for a wonderful holiday meal. We'll start with my root vegetables. 
Oh, those look so good. Oh, I know. Carrots and it looks like beets in there. Then and, we'll have creamy and, uh, potato potatoes. puffs. Oh, and those mm. look good too. Who doesn't love potatoes? Then we have tofu turkey. And That's oh, beautiful. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks. Sis. And we're going to top it off with carob delight cake. cake. Ooh, a nice Ooh. slice of cake to end with. That sounds good. Is your mouth watering? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sis. I know I want one of those root vegetables. And, you know, just relax and watch the program. And um, you can always go on the um, 3ABN website and get the recipes, or you can go on the MitchiffSisters.com website to get the recipes. Yeah, just okay. www.mitchiffsisters.com and click on recipes. And we also give you the picture of what the recipe looks like. That's right. Okay, I'm going to start with the... Now, um, I chose some of my favorite root vegetables. So um, if you do not particularly like them, I say you try them <laughs> because you need to eat your vegetables. So you're going to do the recipe? <laughs> read the recipe? No, you didn't... Um, Yes, I will, sis. No, but you can s substitute another vegetable in or leave it out if there's a vegetable that you don't like. But Linda's right. Let me read the <laughs> recipe for you. For this, you will need four cups of zucchini, cut into one-inch pieces, four cups of yellow summer squash, cut into one-inch pieces, four cups of carrots, peeled and cut, four cups of sweet potatoes, peeled and cut, four cups of red beets, peeled and cut, and two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Is that it? Wow, I love oh, short recipes. How simple is that's that? It. Okay, Brenda, since I'm gonna do one, um, I'm gonna just do cut off the tops for the beets for uh -huh. you and I'll let you peel. But folks, you're gonna need some gloves, some gloves. for the beets. That's right. So um, am I doing beets? You no, know, we're famous for um, our I'm gloves. gonna have you do sweet potatoes. Okay. So what I'm gonna get, if you want to do the beets, I'll get happy oh, to give you the beets. Oh, that's just fine. I'm yeah. gonna get, I like this started with the sweet yeah. potato. So with the sweet potato, I'm going to just cut off the little end. And then if you will peel that for me. Okay. And Brenda, gonna I'm going to cut the beet. I'm just going to cut the, um, you want to cut what, the top. Let's show them what a beet looks like right here. See? There you go. With that. So you want to cut the, the, the um, leaves off? It does tell off. why we called this root vegetables. Well, can you Did see? They? they grow in the ground. <laughs> There's a root. So, sis, if you want to okay. peel the beet for me. Okay. And I will throw this away. And throw this away. And I'll show you how to cut it. You know, I... Whoa, stumbling in. Huh. <laughs> and, if, and, if you, and if you don't happen to have... Um, a peeler, you can use a knife. You just um, try not to take so much of the vegetable with you. Okay, while they're peeling that, I'm gonna take a zucchini, and you're gonna want, oh wow, she's she's fast, good job. Here, let's keep her going. <laughs> got me another one? I got you another one, there, keep her going. Okay, I'm gonna take the zucchini, and I'll show you how to cut it. Now, you think you're cutting them, I actually am gonna change the recipe because I put cut into one inch cubes, you really should do one and a half to two inch cubes because um, they really cook down. So I cut it in half. They shrink. Then I huh? cut it again. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to want to cut it into a good one and a half inch cubes like this. Okay? And put that on they shrink your up. cookie sheet. They, and aren't you going to spray that with a little nonstick cooking spray? Yes, I will. Um, okay. So, I'll, and I can spray it at the end, I'll show you. Um, I use a roasting pan at home. I have a, it's about a two inch size pan and it's a little bit bigger than this because I cook, um, I, I usually do a lot of vegetables because I invite a lot of people over. So, um, this is our yellow squash and I cut off the tops and I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the zucchini. Is that it for I'm me? gonna go like this. I got oh. another one for you. Have at it. And I'm going to do the same thing. She wants me mm -hmm. to cut the ends off, I know. And put this on. And then the carrots, for sake of, I like to do it in strips, but you can cut it in circles or you can do it in strips. And it's up to you. And you can even leave it like that because they're going to roast. Mm -hmm. here's your, now, here's, here's your beet. The beet. Same thing. 
I cut the beet into thirds like this and then in half. And it, depending on the size, but They're look nice how big those chunks are. Because they will shrink down. You're going to see the, the finished product, how big it is. And the same thing with the sweet potato. You're going to cut it, cut it again, cut it again, and then nice big chunks because it really does cook down. Now what you're going to do is take your vegetables and you'll take a couple pans. Can I have the um, spray down there? Sure. Please. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this and spray really good like this. Make sure your vegetables are all coated. Toss them a little bit. And you're going to put them in a um, 425 degree oven. And if you do not have this spray, then you can just take a little bit of olive oil um, and, and just kind of and drizzle it over and then toss it with your hands. Then I take a little bit of salt and just sprinkle a little salt on it. You're going to put this in the oven um, at 425 degrees for about 45 minutes and flip them over gently um, in between, like halfway in the cooking time. And you want them to get a little bit of brown because they're roasted. And here's what they look like. And you like. can see how they shrunk down to size as That's well. That's right. Can't see you? how they shrunk they down? They are delicious. Well, you know what else says is delicious is your potatoes. Potato. My That's creamy right. potato puffs. For that, you will need five cups of potatoes cooked and diced, two cups of unsweetened soy milk, half a cup of tofuti better than sour cream, three slices of vegan cheddar cheese, one half teaspoon of seasoned salt, one half teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of cornstarch, three tablespoons of cold water, one 17.3 ounce package of puff pastry sheets. This one is a special one just for Cinda. Well, <laughs> you can you have enjoy it too. too. Thanks, <laughs> Everybody knows Cinda loves potatoes. Exactly. We all love potatoes, but Cinda really loves potatoes. I know. <laughs> it's like her favorite food. Hey. Yeah, she'll eat it cold, she'll eat them hot, and lukewarm, mm -hmm. in between. Mm -hmm. Any way you want to give them to me. <laughs> so to get started, we're going to make our gravy part first. We've already cooked our potatoes. You can dice them. Um, this is five cups. Um, this recipe, you can even add extra potatoes if you want to, because there's enough cream sauce. Please okay. do. <laughs> Sis, if you could make our slurry, because okay. we're going to need that. You could turn the fire on there, and we're going to start this heating. Okay. This is a really simple, easy um, potato dish. We're going to use a little seasoned salt, and if you want any other kind of seasonings in it, instead of that, just go for it. Um, I, it's hard to mess up potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's your slurry. That's my slurry, okay. And uh, over here, you can make 24 of these little potato things, or you can have more dough and just make 12. So we're going to do the 12. So okay, cut this so in what 12 is this? pieces. This is puff pastry. Puff dough. pastry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and like you can get this in your three this way and four and it that is way. Vegan. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And sis, if you could get the um, vegan cheese slices. Okay. And. I'm going to go ahead and pour and in. Do, I, do you want me to break them up or just drop them Break them up them and put them in here. And I've got a cornstarch. It usually doesn't take too long for this to thicken. Okay. And when you're working with puff pastry, you really want to have it, your dough cold. So right. leave it in the yeah. refrigerator till your you know, you it comes frozen. So you'll want to thaw it out overnight in your refrigerator, but then bring it out of your refrigerator right before you're ready to use it so you keep That's it cold. Right. Otherwise it kind of sticks together and you won't be able to work with it. You won't be able so to do anything with it. you can spray the pan it. over there and okay. then place these in the pan. Okay. We'll get all ready for our potato dish. And you'll see how easy this is to make it potatoes look elegant. You know, and that's what makes, um, but it's simple. It's so nice yeah. because if you can do something elegant, it makes it extra special. And this is like almost effortless, you know, because it's it's very that's easy. What, that's what I'm thinking. It's effortless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I'm working so, so hard. So you can see what Brenda's doing over here. 
I'll bring this over here so you can see. I'm picking up one of these particular doughs like this and just dropping it into the muffin tin and leave out your points right here so it just makes a little cup. And take note that she sprayed her muffin tin first. Right. Because otherwise it will stick and you won't be able to get it out. That's right, and that is important. And that's a problem. <laughs> okay, it's almost thick. If you, I don't know if you can probably see this, but it's it's very thick. Okay. It's it's getting there. And sis, in just a minute, you're going to put that in. Oh, one minute. Well, we're just me finishing up melting the <laughs> vegan cheese, which this vegan cheese takes a little bit more time to. Well, to vegan do. cheese, if you've ever worked with vegan cheese, there are some that just won't melt, and I mean it's hard to melt. Yeah. They are coming now, out. Now, how do you say it? I like da Is it Daya? Da Daya or something? I love that cheese. I can't remember what it is, but maybe someday I'll tell you. <laughs> I haven't really found a cheese substitute that I absolutely love. So to me, I just I just put the cheese out. And I just you don't, don't need it. You I don't need have to have it in. Leave the okay, out. go ahead and turn it off and then add that. Oh, turn it off first? Yep, turn it I off. I shouldn't say that. I had a friend that made a cashew cheese. Um, that was tasted really good, but the, such concentrated cashews are so high in fat that it would definitely be something I didn't eat all and the time. And even though it's a good fat, you just don't eat so much of exactly. it. Exactly. All right, we're gonna put the potatoes in there now. You want this? Yeah, you can go ahead and mash some of them up. We're done with this whip now. Okay, Except I'll take I lost it. one of my potatoes in there. Oh, don't lose, get, get, don't lose not the potato. <laughs> not letting you get rid of that. All right. And you can put, um, garnish it with fresh herbs. So I'm gonna leave this here so you guys can Sissy, see. You can cut up just a little bit of those potatoes. Oh, I can cut. I can cut up a potato for you. So what we're gonna oh, do? Look at her. Don't you double dip. No, no more in there. <laughs> hey, I got you covered. <laughs> and you're just gonna fill each one like that. That's really good, sis. Bake. You won't it. let me double dip, but I can do this. You bake them at uh -huh. 400 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. That's all you have to do, 10 to 12 minutes, depending on your oven, because mm -hmm. all ovens are different. Mm -hmm. And then we have some right here for you to see Already how baked. they turned out. Mm -hmm. Already Those baked. Cute little uh, potato puffs. Mm -hmm. Those are delicious. And they make a delightful um, holiday meal. Yes, they do. You know what else is going to make your holiday meal delightful? And that's Brenda's Tofu Turkey. Turkey. Let me read the recipe for you. For this, you will need, for the turkey, five packages of extra firm water-packed tofu, two teaspoons of ground dried thyme, two teaspoons of rubbed sage, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one fourth cup of McKay's chicken style seasoning, one teaspoon of salt, two large potatoes peeled and cut into one inch cubes, one half cup of unsweetened almond milk, one large onion, one package of tofurkey kielbasa shredded or torn in small pieces, two cups of fresh mushrooms, three fourths cups of pecans, two thirds cup of cooked brown rice, one teaspoon of salt, four teaspoons of McKay's chicken style seasoning, two slices of whole wheat bread torn in small pieces, and for the basting glaze, you will need two tablespoons of better than bouillon, no chicken base, two tablespoons of water, and two tablespoons of canola oil. Now that's a lot of ingredients, but I know, know. But you know what, it's worth it. It is, you know, holiday time is the time to do a little something extra than you would normally do. And it looks a lot harder than it is. I call it tofu turkey. And uh, I'm going to get started here because it is gonna take us a little while to get all this together. But hang with me, you're gonna see how easy it is. We're gonna need a few things. First, we're going to use tofu, and this is already processed in a food processor. And if you have a large food processor, it'll go by faster because it takes five containers of your... So you just um, ground it really fine. You, put, you process just, it. You, you process it. it. You blend, you blend it. it. You process it. And in fact, this is the... Um, uh, 
water, water pack. pack tofu that people don't know it is. I didn't have an extra one to show you here. So um, that is uh, water pack tofu. And you just rinse it and really squeeze all the water out of it. And, um, uh, and then you're going to put it in the processor and you're gonna do that. Cause there's still, a, it still retains some of the water. So we're gonna take it, uh, I'm gonna and tell you And you process it until that. it's real smooth. It's very smooth. So now, Cinda has got all those seasonings I gave you. She is going to just put all those together and start stirring. While she's doing that, Lindy is going to start this um, <laughs> pan cooking here and spray some nonstick cooking spray on there. Now, we've already sauteed the onions because I really like those nice and done. So you can put those in there, sis. And I wanted to show you what the tofurkey looks like. Now, this is a vegan uh, sausage. And really check because a lot of the sausages I saw are not vegan, even though they're vegetarian. So this one here is a vegan sausage made by tofurkey. It has a really good flavor, and it flavors this dish a lot. For this is, And I'm making the filling right here. Here we're making the tofu, and here we're making the filling. So this is what that looks like. And, uh, and then for the basting that I'm gonna show you that I get, we won't have a chance to baste today, but this is what I use, the Better Than Bouillon um, uh, No Chicken Base. And that is really one of the, um, the best bouillons that I have, vegetarian, vegan bouillons that I have ever come across. Make sure it says no chicken though on it because they, they do make the they, chicken. Right, and they put them, the jars side by side. side. So check and see, it's gotta say no chicken on it. Now, this, uh, you can see how these come like this. You can just grate these and, uh, or you can just peel them in small shreds like this and just put them right in here. So these have all just been shredded and I'm gonna just put that right over here. And so Linda's going to stir that up with the onions. With the pre-cooked onions. With the pre-cooked onions. They're already done. They are clear, they are really done. And I'm going to just um, put a little seasonings in here as she's stirring and a little bit of salt. I'm gonna have, this is cooked brown rice that's in here. So that's all done. And then I'm gonna toast up our pecans. Really when you toast those nuts, uh, like that, it really brings out the fragrance they, of the nut. They become more fragrant. You can smell it oh, and yes. taste mm. the difference. I wish you could smell this. Okay, and this now is I'm going to add the mushrooms, and these are just the chopped mushrooms. Okay, and you notice that there was uh, uh, the potatoes in the re in the recipe with the water and a little bit tiny bit of salt. That's because you're cooking and boiling those potatoes, and then you're just making mashed potatoes out of it. That's what you're doing. So I have the two cups of mashed potatoes. Now I will share this with you in a pinch. I will just throw a couple of potatoes in the microwave and take them out, and mash mm -hmm. them up, put a little. I don't even measure. I just put enough, uh, you know, a little sprinkle of salt and enough uh, so almond milk or soy milk to get it to a nice mashed potato consistency. And it's a, you know, to save, saves me some time. Mm -hmm. So that's a shortcut if you want to take that as well. And um, Linda, then we're going to just put in our breadcrumbs and those are just whole wheat bread. And I'll give that to Cinda. And then when she stirs all that up, she's going to put in the mashed potatoes. Now, there obviously isn't enough time to do all this at once. So I have some stuffing already made. So Linda can go ahead and cook that, but I'm not gonna use it right now. Cindy, you did a really good job over here. Thank you. And uh, we can take this off as well. Now I wanna show you something really um, some important here because, um, actually let's do this one first. I have a strainer. You're gonna need a strainer. You can use any shape you want. I chose this one because it has a shape of a loaf. But honestly, the first one I made, the only strainer I had was just a round one, and I made the round one, and it looked kind of a bubble on my plate, but, you know, everybody <laughs> loved it. <laughs> and that works, too, so I then just you can call it, it bubble loaf. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good, but I got this. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need some cheesecloth. And, uh, so and cheesecloth is, is a gauze. It's so, like a gauze, and you can um, you can get it in a hardware store. You can get you it. You can go rub, rob your first aid kit. <laughs> I was just thinking, <laughs> Mom used to wrap our, our sores and stuff with that if we got hurt. So here's cut. what you're going to do oh. is you're going to take the cheesecloth and drape it over the side this way and over the side this way. And, sis, if you would just cut right here for me. There we go. And... Um, then this unfolds. So, but before I unfold it, 
Cinda, I need you to put this under running water and wring out the water for me because it needs to be wet when you put it on here. So you're going to put it in here. And we are going to just line this. And when you line it, you don't want any uh, wrinkles in there. You want to keep it as smooth as you can. And this is a fine job you're doing over there. Is that there. ready for mashed potatoes? You can potatoes? put the mashed potatoes in. Okay, sis, to help me, we'll just unfold that. Yep, here it is. And so now you're just going to drape that over and see how you just line it like this. Now, you're going to spoon all of this. If you'd hold this up for me, Cinda. Right, and yeah. we're just going to, don't get it on the sides. We're going to just spoon it right into the bottom. We don't touch the sides with it. And just... Put it on the bottom, like that, and that's good. Okay, and then you're just going to even it out flat, okay? When it's completely evened out flat, like this, all the way down, get it nice and smooth on the top, okay? And um, then make sure it's, it's that if you push down gently, it'll, fill up that bottom really nice as well, see? So now you're going to fold in this. We're just gonna fold in the ends of the cheesecloth and cover it, and we've dampened it, remember? So now just fold that all in. Now guess what you do? I've already got one done. Mm. Uh, okay? Let's make because, a guess. Well, let me share this with you because this still has a lot of moisture in it. We want all the moisture out of it before we bake it. So this is done the day before you want to make your turkey. So. This is already at this point. Now I'm going to show you what I did. Which if you put this on the back table, you're going to take that now and you're going to find a pan like this that you are going to put it in. Uh, something that any pan that'll fit to catch because you're going to put, here's what I did. I found a bowl that fit on top of that and I put the bowl in here like that. And then you want something heavy to weigh it down. And we found this bag of rice and we just put that on it. And we did this last night in the prep kitchen. And so now all the liquid. Show them the liquid. It, that, so we'll show you the liquid that comes out of here. And um, ooh, that was quite a can bit. Can you hold that up for them, Cinda, so they can see? Like this, so you can see. You can take a look, and you can get an idea. Can see you how see much? Uh, go the other. No. Yeah, there you can see now. You can see it's quite a bit of of, of uh, the water that came off the tofu. So now we're going to take this off. We're going to unwrap it. And let's see here, let's see, this, is, this is very, very wet, but now this has had a chance to really drain that off. And I'm gonna take this bowl, if I would, sis. Okay. And now I'm going to, to take and about one inch around the, the loaf, you're gonna make a mark all the way around about one inch, like that. And you're gonna hollow it out to one inch from the bottom. And you're gonna just keep hollowing that out like this. Let me show you. And, and if you get too close to the netting, you're gonna have to fill it back in because you, you really do have to keep about an in, inch. So we're just hollering, out, hollering, the, hollering that out. And sis, if you, you can do that here with me, if you can take some out and, that's right. So we're just making a well but make sure you keep an inch on the bottom and on the sides. Because all this that we're taking out, we are going to cover and put and back put in because we're going to put our filling, our stuffing in the middle. Isn't that cool? That so is this is really, really cool. a stuffed turkey. So you is know? this done? I can turn it off? You can turn it off. You did a great job. And... Uh, is that good? It's getting there. Let's see. That is so probably, really it, cool. probably keep it. Now it's good that it's good, but now we got to make sure we just smooth it out there. Perfect. Good job. So now I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to take a little bit of the stuffing and put in the middle right here. Even though I already had a stuffing ready for you, see, I didn't know if you would get this done in time, and I wanted to be prepared. So my assistant Melissa Hoffman was who helps us here. She made a, a one in advance so that we'd have one just in case. But. That's okay. Our crew will be happy because we'll feed them. <laughs> That's right. So you just I'm just gonna to sake of time, I'm not gonna stuff all of it in here, but I'll just do some of it in here. 
and then pull that out of the way, Linda, so that they can see. And then I'm just going to pour this right back on top. And Cindy, you're going to spread that around and cover it. That's what we're going to do. So now I need a, Melissa, I need a baking sheet. So it's um, right here behind you. Oh, it is? Oh, Almost. She's already got it. Melissa she's already got efficient. it. I should have known. Okay, so. And this is hot underneath, so. Uh, okay. Let's be careful. Now I put a parchment here because you're going to need this to transfer it onto your platter afterwards, after it's baked. So I, I like to put a nice uh, piece of parchment paper right on it as well. And good job. Okay. Now we're going to just fold in those ends like that. Just like we did, oops, sorry, nope, we're not. We're, uh, <laughs> this is ready to invert on our pan. So you now this is the tricky part. Be careful with so, the bottom. So now I'm going to cover it with the parchment paper, cover it with this, and one, two, three sisters, we're going to flip towards me. One, two, three, okay? Now we're going to take this off. Here's our, our strainer, and we're going to take the cheese clock off and look at this. Is this not amazing? Now, and then I just smooth down the ends and you can, I can even take off, just tear oh, that I down, it won't matter. Too. It won't matter. There we go. And look at that, that's all ready to bake. I wow. just smooth down the sides. Now, that basting, what I told you about, we were going to baste at this point, you put the, um, I have a confession to make. I didn't buy enough of it, so the sample took it all for me. So um, I don't have my basting ingredients, but you would just baste it at this point with that chicken, no chicken, uh, I mean, that uh, no chicken, or is that better than bouillon? And you baste it like that, bake it in the oven, and it's going to bake for how long, Melissa? It's going to bake at 375 for 50 minutes, and then you're going to turn it down to 350 for one hour. Now, she's sitting on the side. I, I wish, wish you could, you see, could see why I'm she's laughing. Got a big she's got a sign big sign she going. She knew I'd forget. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see the sign. What'd you write? <laughs> then you don't get this. <laughs> She won't come on camera. She's too shy. But this is what she's holding up on the bat on the, on it. Look at this. It, she's uh, <laughs> holding up on the side. Look at that. Seventy five for fifteen minutes. Three fifty for one hour. If she's not the best assistant ever, <laughs> I tell you what, she really is. And then when it comes out, you have some something to scooch it onto your platter, and then you're just going to decorate it. And there is one already ready for you right there to see. And just garnish. Cinda did such a beautiful job helping garnish this. She is this. definitely a garnish queen. And with, with some uh, Brussels sprouts and potato wedges. And lots of and, fresh herbs. And red peppers. And all those herbs are from Cinda's garden. And that's all there is to it. Wow. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to try it. Something else you can't wait to try is Linda's special dessert, Carob Delight Cake. All right, let me read the recipe for you. You'll need four cups of unbleached all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of baking powder, three-fourths cup of carob powder, a fourth a cup of Roma, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one and a half cups of sugar, one cup of canola oil. You'll need one cup of pure maple syrup, one 12 ounce container of Tofuti Better Than Cream Sour Cream, and two tablespoons of vanilla, two cups of soy milk, a fourth a cup of cornstarch, and a fourth a cup of cold water, and three cups of non-dairy whipped topping. For the frosting, you'll need three cups of powdered sugar, two tablespoons of carob powder, one tablespoon of vanilla, one fourth cup plus two tablespoons of soy milk. Now it seems like every holiday, someone looks forward to something <laughs> that is sweet. Sweet, that's right. I know I do. <laughs> and there's nothing I wrong with too. that. Just you know, we we, we don't indulge mm -hmm. all the time. But there's times that it's and, nice to have something special. And honestly, I look forward to something sweet more than just for the holiday. Oh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so I guess you could use this recipe for something else. So let me, should we tell our viewers how much of, of this cake, this is her, her carob cake, how much of this cake are you going to enjoy? Well, I can, I can taste it to see what it's like. 
But the, she's going to have an extra piece of your tofu turkey. Yes, you know for, what for I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> telling a little tale on her because Linda makes the most awesome vegan desserts, and she has never liked any dessert, ever, any I, kind of dessert. I taste it, and I try to <laughs> like it. Which is so unusual when you think about it. She can make really awesome desserts, and she doesn't even like dessert. <laughs> my husband does, though. So. And I love my husband, so I make him things. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So she, she tastes it. She she has to, but you know. <laughs> this is the unbleached. Um, I wish I'd get white that problem. Flour. Yeah. Not me. I enjoy the sweet. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna put our Florida crystals in. Okay. And our carob powder. Ooh, Ooh, that, 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 that you're now powder, wearing. Huh? Oh, yeah, does that look good on me? It yeah, does. She's wearing essence of carrot powder right now. And this is Roma, which is um, uh, a vegan or a substitute for yeah, non-caffeinated. Not yes, no caffeine. So we're gonna put that in, and then we've got some baking powder. Okay. And a little bit of salt. Okay. Now we're gonna just put all this together, mix it together. Ooh. I know. It's, it's getting all this. <laughs> <laughs> when when David all was when my up. son David was little, he would and he would help me bake and we would be doing like this and um, he would pick it up and go, Wee! It's <laughs> snowing, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be just covered with it. And you probably ran and got your pit, your camera. Oh, of course. Oh, of yeah. course. If she didn't get mad about it, she'd go, oh, don't move. Don't move. Why can't my camera? <laughs> I know, because we've seen the pictures. <laughs> you know, it is fun to make memories that families can go back and look at and, and laugh and enjoy the fun times. I mean, that that's really special to do that as a family. Right. And, you know, if they're having fun... That's Have fun with them. Exactly. Enjoy your time with your children. It's all going to, they, they grow up way too fast, That's I can right. tell you. You know, having now had two daughters that have you know, grown up and now give have families of their have own. Their families of their own. So it, and I, I really remember it like it was yesterday when they were babies. I'm thinking, wow, how did that happen? You okay, know, so we are going to. Um, what do you want me to do over here? Over here, if you could make a slurry with uh, okay. the cornstarch and water, and I'm going to put the soy okay. milk in here. I'll take that for you. And I'm going to put our oil in. And I'm making the so. slurry with cold water. That's right. Because uh, you wouldn't want to use hot. It no. would thicken immediately. Yeah. And this well, is this is uh, vanilla, and we're going to get our pure maple syrup in here. I love the right. smell of vanilla. Mm hmm And cinnamon, I do, too. Okay, sis. All right. We'll pour that in, too. Okay. And that's like, takes, that's an egg replacer. Mm hmm So I'm going to stir that up before I get the mixer in here. A little okay. bit. There we go. And this makes um, a large cake. It, yes, it sure does. You're making three eight inch or nine inch rounds. There's, hmm. there's three. Yeah, three. I, I know they're eight inch, not, they I look think nine they're nine inch to me. They're, they I think they're nine, nine inch. inch. It's just nine inch. <laughs> well, I guess that's a clue. So I think if that was written right on, I just read it. it was, okay, folks, it is nine. We can confirm. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking earlier about gift giving, and I recently received um, from one of our, um, you know, Kids Time viewers uh, this little story that really touched my heart, and um, uh, um, you might have heard of it, but this little um, boy, she told this little boy that um, had a sister that was really, really sick, and, uh, and so she needed um, to have a, uh, some blood transfusion, and so... The parents came home and the father took the little boy home and he said, would you be willing to give your sister some of your blood? And the little boy was quiet for a minute and he, was, he, he looked down at his shoes and then he said, honey, you don't have to. Do you, would, you, would you be willing to? And he said, daddy, he said, would that mean that, that my sister would live? And he said, yes, he, that's going to help her live. He said, then I will do it. And just right away, didn't hesitate, didn't anything else. Just that was it. He, as long as he knew his sister would live, and um, so he he uh, and, and from what I, the story that told, it was it wasn't just uh, 
uh, some some type of surgery or something. I don't know if she needed some kind of procedure. So when when it was all over with, and he came, it, they were waiting for him. They took his blood, and they're waiting for him. He's waiting there, and and he asked the nurse. He goes, "When am I going to die?" And Aww. it just touched my heart so much because here he Aww. he was willing to give his blood. He thought he was going to die. He thought he was giving his sister, you know, his blood, and he was going to die. And he's like, "How much longer? Will, when am I going to die?" Aww. And that just touched my heart. And I thought about what Jesus did for us. Exactly. You know, he didn't hesitate. You know, he loved no. us so much that he didn't didn't hesitate at all to you know die on a cross and give his blood so that we could live. Wow. You know, so wow, that is is that amazing. not doesn't that just touch your heart? Well, while I'm whipping this up, um, sis, if you could make the frosting okay. and put that all together. Okay, I'm going to take the powdered sugar now. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, 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 just a minute. Wait a minute. Can, can I just help it snow right here a little bit? <laughs> You do that until it's all creamy, mm -hmm. and then we're going to spray these, fill these pans with, um, divide it up, and try to make it as even as we can. Okay, go do that, sis. And then we're going to show you what we have here so that I can explain to you wh uh, how you put it together. Okay. So this is our carob cake right here that we already have finished. There's three layers. See how big they are? In between each layer, you can put some soy cream. And um, on the top of it, you, you just put your frosting, let it drizzle. It's, a, it's kind of a very runny frosting, and you'll let it drizzle down. And you can just garnish it with um, some fresh raspberries, some uh, grated carob, and that is your dessert. And it's a three-layered um, carob cake. Wow. Yeah, Which looks I think delicious. will put a smile on your family's face. And look at this right here. I, it did fit all three nine inch. We confirmed that nine inches. Uh, uh, and right I think there. we can tell them if they wanted to get some of our recipes, what do they need to do? That's right. You know, right. Um, we actually have six cookbooks mm -hmm. out. And we're going to show you how you can get one or all six of them. <laughs> If you've enjoyed the recipes you've seen today and would like to purchase your own copy of one of their cookbooks, including their new cookbook, Cooking with Kellogg's, you can write to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. That's 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. You can call 618-627-4651. That's 618-627-4651. Or, if you'd like to contact the Mitchiff Sisters for speaking appointments or concerts, you can do so at their website at MitchiffSisters.com. That's M-I-C-H-E-F-F -F Sisters dot C-O-M. In trying to decide how I want to decorate um, this year's holiday table, I was thinking, you know, we've been saying Jesus is, is the, the reason, reason for, for the, the season. season. <laughs> so I wanted to decorate with things Jesus made think and, of and think of nature. That's right. So um, it may look complicated to you, but it is very simple. And in fact, you know, next year, I may just start with a blank table and I'm show, show them how to, the scratch. How to do Would you like that? that? <laughs> um, but for this, I took some old books and I had some bird cages and you don't have to match mine. I mean, I love yeah. birds, so I decorate my house with birds and bird cages. And in fact, I even have them hanging in my uh, tree outside mm -hmm. in, in different of the trees. So I took some bird cages and I put um, a candle in the bird cage and then I put some birds here. I took some old books and I just put one on top of each other. And I just put a little Christmas tree on and some birds. And then I put another candle here. Then I took a larger bird cage and I put some trees in and I put three angels for three, three angels. angels broadcasting. 
that we had and to think of our, <laughs> exactly. think of our home network here. Exactly. And also, for more importantly, the Three Angels message. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> and then um, I mirrored the image with the bird. Since I had two bird cages, I decided I would mirror it um, and do the same thing on the other side. But you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, last year I did, had all different kinds of lanterns, mm -hmm. the um, yes. metal lanterns that I mm -hmm. used. I remember and that. So nothing was alike. So you don't have to have things alike if you don't want mm -hmm. to. I just happened to have just that. Just be creative, too. Exactly. And then mm -hmm. I took greenery, and I put um, greenery everywhere. I have it. This is silk. You can use real greenery. Mm -hmm. You can go out and cut if you happen to have an ivy bush or you happen to have an evergreen a tree. tree or an evergreen tree. Um, you can cut some, right. um, or a holly some bush. branches off of it or in some leaves and spread that around. And I just put some berries here. And then I got some pine cones. And I put pine cones here and there and all over. And you can make it a Sabbath afternoon activity, just going around putting, choosing right. pine cones and berries and things like that, just to, it's a family outing. In fact, we did that as kids. Yes, we did. <laughs> That's the reason I thought of it. <laughs> because mom had us doing all, mom. That's right. Mom, That's right. What mom did not, so much with nothing. We, we grew up so dirt poor, really. We, we had nothing, and mom could make something out of nothing. Right. I mean, Yet mom is very artistic. And so, and very good with coming up with crafts. She was very good at drawing. Yes. She used to draw in church um, to keep us quiet. We'd have to, and we'd try and guess what she was drawing. And she'd just sit there and just draw while she's listening to the sermon. Mm. But she's very good at crafts. And so we learned all kinds of really um, neat creative ways things, and yeah. creative things to do. That's so, right. um, also, what I did was I love snow. I mm. mean, I I just love it. I know some people don't love it me. as much as that I do. Me, that would be me. That would be me. But I love it. And so I took some snow and I just sprinkled this. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't sprinkle real snow. I no. thought I, th I thought maybe <laughs> one of you guys would catch well, me say, on that. Well, I was getting ready to trust me. I was getting ready. It's the <laughs> fake stuff, but you guys, it's I, that's the reason right. it's see, melting we're, in here. We're, I see. Look, I just took some fake snow and I sprinkled ah! it all over. <laughs> I sprinkled it all over everywhere, and it just kind of gives it a really um, nice feel to it mm -hmm. and look to it. It glistens. And right. you know, one thing you know that Cinda's famous for too is her take home gifts. When you're a guest at her house, she if for a dinner, she's always got a little take home gift at her at your plate. I love that and uh, I look forward to those little take homes because she's so creative with that. And I love what you did this year for, for and I think you're gonna want to do the same in your home as well. Well, on an earlier program, we um, I I did a recipe called cake in a jar. And um, this is a cake in the jar and streusel what cake. it's it's apple streusel cake and actually it seals so this mm -hmm. will last um, a, while. at you least a show. month this will last you um, can show, if it seals show what so that looks like so you here's can get one it. like this and mm -hmm. um, it uh, as you can see it's indented so that means it's sealed mm -hmm. and um, so I'm going to show you all I did is I took Let me hold that for you I took a piece of fabric and actually hold, yeah, okay. hold that down. And then you can take some, I took some just some um, twine like r ribbon and tied it around. Tied it around. You can wrap it around twice if you want and just tie a bow. And you can do your favorite fabric. I mean, this is just a really inexpensive burlap that mm -hmm. I did. and. Each one of whoops, I didn't, each one of your is. guests have a really Ooh. nice. There yeah, there's two. Each one of your gifts have a um, guests have a really nice take home gift. That's mm. and, nice. um, beautiful. Yes, and this. I love it. And set it by your plate. You it can make part these, of your um, your table. you know, several weeks ahead of time. Yeah, it's it, it really is awesome. Well, let's take a look one more time at some of the food that we prepared today, just to give you an idea for your holiday table. And we're going to start, start off with the, um, oh, Linda's cake. Carob Delight cake. That's right. And, and then creamy potato puffs. 
And then we have our tofu turkey. Oh, I can't wait to try that. with all kinds that. of vegetables. You got your vegetables and your turkey right there, but there's not enough vegetables on that plate yet. Because you can never have enough vegetables. <laughs> exactly. We have roasted root vegetables. And, and, uh, and, you know, let's leave you, we would like to leave you with a special Bible verse. One that we grew up with, mm -hmm. one that we love, that we've said, and you know by heart as Say well. Say it with us, John, John 3, 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. May all your holiday meals be seasoned with God's love. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.